Hey everyone, this is Nitro. Since it's Monday, it's time for another Nitro setup video. Now, I should mention, next month we are supposed to get the release of Summit Arena on the international server. If we continue to follow the Chinese server, which we should be. So I'm gearing up for that. Uh, I'll go, I plan on doing a video on Summit Arena in detail, hopefully sometime this week as long as I have enough time to get that video out. Um, but the two videos I plan to do this week primarily is going to be a how to build juggler video and a video talking about how Summit Arena works. So look forward to those. In any case, let's begin with this week's Nitro setup. So the very first thing I should cover as always is the dragon farming results. So let me just bring that up quickly so that you guys can see how it went last week. And it's actually kind of interesting. So because I didn't do any uh, real farming the week before, I didn't release a separate video on that. But the week before, surprisingly, I got a lot of SSRs just from doing dailies. So for example, the week before, on Tuesday, I got a Galaxy Cloak and the Blue Moon from a joint. Okay. On Thursday, I got an Assault Helm. And then Friday and Saturday, I didn't play. I didn't even do the uh, Daily Dragon. But then on Sunday, I only did two dailies. And by two dailies, I mean I did the Sunday daily. And then I also queued up to run the Monday daily with Dark Dragon. And from those two dailies, I also got two more SSRs, one each per run. So that was what? One run, two runs, three runs, four runs, five, six runs. And I got a total of one, two, three, four, five SSRs, including the joint one. So that was ridiculous, okay? And then, so last week, pretty much did the standard, you know, uh, one run on Monday, got nothing. One run on Tuesday, got nothing. Got the Holy Ring from Tyler's Trial, which is my third one. Um, on Wednesday, I did another run and got an Assault headgear. So I just keep getting them and I keep turning them into ore. Okay. The only the reason I only did one run though was because I was continuing with the dragons. I was doing the uh, missions, right? There's right now for every dragon you have missions to clear the level 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 65, and 70 dragons. And clearing each dragon gives you some Trinity crystals. So I've been catching up on finishing off all of those quests, which I succeeded in doing. Right? Wednesday I did 20, 30, 40. And then on Sunday, on sorry, on Saturday, I finished 50, 60, and 65. Right? Thursday, I just spent it doing 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 65, as well as one daily run on level 70. Friday was uh, Ice, which I just did four runs on. So on the whole, you can see, right? One run, Assault Headgear. Four runs, got Twilight Armor and Gargoyle Jacket, and also a Twilight Helmet from Joints. So Friday was actually a very good day. Saturday, one run, got nothing. And then Sunday, I did 40 runs and I got three SSRs. Continue to not get anything particularly good that I want. So I'm still missing all the core SSR weapons, you can see. But on the whole, last week, you know, it's kind of crazy that 40 runs gave me three SSRs, right? And then here, I did just a few runs and I got like six. So. It just shows the RNG factor of dragon farming. All right, so let's jump back into the game now. Let me just bring the game back up. Here we go. So fortunately though, the runs on Sunday gave me just enough ore to do my uh, weekly summons or weekly gambling, I should say, for weapons. So, here we go. Another Peacemaker. Bloody Melody. Come on! Two Bloody Melodies. Wow. Well, I'm not going to complain about the Peacemaker because now I have a level 50 Peacemaker from getting that one, but the two Bloody Melodies were useless. So, in the end, I'm just going to trash these two Bloody Melodies. And then...
it just shows I'm continuing to miss all those nice SSR weapons. So let's bring up this gallery quickly. So, continue to look for Ragnarok, continue to look for a Yggdrasil branch, continue to look for the Extreme Magic Bow. That pretty much sums it up. You know, the other ones I don't really care about. Whether it's Queen's Scepter, or Bathory the Seductress, or Spirit Griever, Blue Star, Red Moon. Don't really care about those ones. It's just the first three that I still want and I'm still missing. As an interesting note, I still don't have a single Last Rites, still don't have a single Bloodline Magic Armor, still don't have a single Aeolus' Battle Armor. Right? Demon Lizard Skin is not a big deal, but yeah, I'm just missing really most of the core end game equipment. And in terms of helmets, well, King's Crown is the one I really want from helmets, right? The other ones like Charon or Tenyo's Headdress you can get away without having, but King's Crown is pretty critical because of the extra damage boost that it gives. So, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully I'll get them eventually, fingers crossed, but the grind continues. As a side note, I actually still have 17 burgers on hand because I didn't do any grinding two weeks ago. So all the burgers that I got that week are still on hand since I only did 40 runs yesterday as opposed to, let's say, 80 runs. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to... Once you fall behind in using burgers, it's pretty hard to catch up unless you have a lot of time to grind the battles. So we'll see. Maybe this week, this coming Sunday. In any case, so those are the Dragon Farm results as well as the current gambling. Now, let's quickly talk about what I've been doing with my shard farming from the Gates of Fate, right? And the current split has been three Zeridas, and it's going well because I'm going to have a five star Zerida on Wednesday. So I can hopefully start using Zerida on Wednesday for my World Arena battles. We'll see how that goes. Other than Zerida, I'm doing three Landia shards every day. So he is now at four stars and I'm building up more and more shards for him because these are my two priority characters that I'm building right now. Other than that, the last three runs, I've been kind of splitting. I've done some on Tiaris, trying to finish her off to bring her to five stars. I don't know when I'm ever going to bring her to 6 stars. I want to, but it's one of those things where getting 150 shards is not easy. Other than Tiaris though, after I get Tiaris to 5 stars, I'm probably going to switch my focus to Juggler. So other than that though, those last 3 runs I've been kind of splitting up to basically focus on whatever I need. For example, I did a bunch on Angelina before, before I realized I really don't need Angelina at 4 stars. Um, last week I actually did a bunch on Rachel because I had to do Rachel because if I go over to Landius to unlock his last bond you needed to do Rachel's uh, bonds so just did that yesterday right date of fate 4 of Rachel and I got some free trinity crystals there as well as unlocking uh, Landius' last bond the attack bond which is pretty important so Landius is my current primary project in terms of upgrading a character to upgrade and why don't I actually just farm this three times right now so once twice and three times because I need those seeds of obsession to level this up right so tomorrow I'm gonna have to do that again to get some more seeds to bring this to upgrade this bond so this is my primary focus upgrading Landius's bonds and secondary focus is upgrading Zerida's bonds, right? Zerida, as an interesting note, also needs seeds of obsession. So it's going to be grinding for these seeds for quite some time, it looks like. In fact, why don't I use... a bread to do 9-6? To, because I'm just so desperate for these seeds right now. Two. Three. 
got one seed in three runs. But so there you go. In any case, though, upgrading those are my two upgrade priorities: Landius and Zerida. And then after that, we'll probably be Juggler and Liana, because Liana is one of my primary healers, but her heart bond has not been touched. So that's my current status in terms of upgrades. Just focusing on Summit Arena characters, preparing for that. So, next, character equipment and so on. So, there's actually been a few changes since last week. First, I changed up Leaden's gear a bit. Um, changed the enchant specifically. He now has the two hard rocks on his Gaia's armor and Aes's helmet still, but I've changed the Oath of Justice and King's Amulet to Crystal Enchants. So, Oath of Justice, the main reason for this is I needed some additional hit points. So Oath of Justice now gives 9% hit points and 1% magic defense. King's Amulet gave 7% defense, 4% hit points, and 3 defense. This change, shifting away from hard rock, was primarily because first, I needed additional defense and magic defense for letting me do more damage. And second, I actually found I needed a tiny bit more hit points to fight against Phoenix 65 more successfully. So this transition was actually a good thing overall. You know, I no longer have the self-heal from Hard Rock, but I'm now doing more damage and have more hit points. So Leaden is tankier, and yeah. And hopefully I'm going to try to re-roll this a few times, you know, hoping to get hit point percentage, defense percentage, ideally match defense percentage, but I'm not expecting that. So just a minor change. The other reason I use the crystal enchants is because Frankly speaking, crystal enchants are not particularly useful for Summit Arena. So I might as well make use of the enchants, right? Healers should not have crystal enchant. They should have full moon because occasionally healers will be attacking in Summit Arena. So there you go. So basically making use of whatever enchants I have, enchant scrolls that I have, right? That's basically it. Oh, uh, is there anything else to bring up? Not particularly, I mean... Haven't really touched Leiden's set, haven't touched Lana's set, right? Leticia takes Elwyn's set. Bozel's set is still waiting replacement, specifically Dark Crown will eventually get replaced by the Tenyo's the Soul Stealer headdress and so on. And uh, yeah, so none of these sets have really been touched. As an aside, today, my dragon run actually gave me Yggdrasil Reef. So this will be mentioned again in next week's video, but I got lucky here. Got the Yggdrasil Reef from the fire dragon, and now that means I can replace the Sage's Hat on my primary healer. So, but of course, the limit as always is Epic Martial Spirits, right? Upgrading equipment, there's a huge limit on your Epic Martial Spirits. For example, just going over my equipment again, the uh, gear I have to replace right now is Yadrasil Reef. It needs three uh, Epic Martial Spirits. Soul Stealer Headdress needs three Epic Martial Spirits to replace the Dark Crown, right? Um, in addition to that, if I want to give the Baldur's White Robe to Bozal, right? to replace the Galaxy Cloak. I also need three Epic Martial Spirits here. So that's 369 right there, okay? And then Liana, her Tenyo's Robe also needs two more levels. That's another two. That's 11 Epic Martial Spirits that I need right now. And then if I were to build up Luna's gear, finish it off, for example, I need three more Epic Martial Spirits for the Cursed Lands. So in total, what? that's what? 14 Epic Martial Spirits that I'm looking at? So, a lot of Epic Martial Spirits needed. 14, one more for Overlord's Badge, 15, three more for Dragon Slayer Gram on Landius, 18 Epic Martial Spirits. So, a lot. In some ways, I'm actually considering stopping gambling for Extreme Magic Bow. I think I'm going to have to, because my, I have a really dire need for Epic Martial Spirits right now, and so that may be my focus for the next few weeks. No more gambling 
for weapons since it's just not been paying off. And instead, I'll just buy more Epic Martial Spirits to get my gear upgraded. So, that is my current status in terms of gear and trying to upgrade stuff. <laughs> Next, let's talk about the training ground. So, infantry untouched. Okay, still 14, 14, 14, 14 here, 14 there. Actually, Lancer has not really been touched either. I think I did a few upgrades here and there, but my limitation right now is, believe it or not, barbells and chess machines. Those two items are limiting me from upgrading my uh, training grounds because I don't really farm energies right now. So Lancer, it is what it is. What it is. Calvary branch is actually what I'm upgrading right now because I'm trying to bring up the Royal Calvary to a level where Landius can use them. So Royal Calvary, currently level seven. I'm mainly, I'm primarily farming for developed gloves and burning straps right now from the entities. So if I get, if whenever I get enough upgrades, I do some of these upgrades. But in the meantime, that's my primary focus right now in terms of upgrades in the training ground. Royal Calvary. Fly on aquatic training ground. Just a quick mention. I actually switched my focus from Holy Pegasus to upgrading Griffin Knights. The reason for that is because first, Holy Pegasus now requires a lot of Devout Gloves, right? Seven and then nine. So I need 16 Devout Gloves to level up Holy Pegasus to level 10. I also need Devout Gloves for Royal Calvary. So forget about the Holy Pegasus for now. In addition, Griffin Knights use up Crazy Shorts and Brown Essential Oil. So they're worth leveling because a crazy number of units can use Griffin Knights. And in many ways, Griffin Knight, for PvP purposes, Lana is better off with Griffin Knights, who get increased attack and defense, than using Holy Pegasus, who reduces the damage they take when you're attacking. Right? In PvP, like Summit Arena and World Arena, you kind of want to one-shot enemies anyways. And if you die, so be it. So Holy Pegasus aren't, don't have as much utility as the Griffin Knights, in my opinion. So that's why I'm leveling up Griffin Knights and abandoning the Holy Pegasus. The only users of Holy Pegasus, to be honest, is just truly Luna and Lance, right? And both of them can also use Griffin Knights, right? Lance, Luna. So I'd say you're better off leveling Griffin Knights than Holy Pegasus. That's my opinion. All right. So other than that, Archer and Assassin Training Ground is really far behind, right? And I don't really have the interesting thing about this Archer and Training. Sorry, the interesting thing about this Archer and Assassin Training Ground though is that they use Balance Balls and Sandbags primarily. So, in terms of upgrading this, it's surprisingly not an issue because of how many how much materials I have. So I'm slowly actually upgrading this Training Ground as a result due to its uh, material usage. For now, I'm focusing everything on attack, but eventually I will bring everything upgraded properly. So really it's the lack of gold materials as always. I'm not doing, but slowly but surely, the Archer and Assassin Training Ground will be upgraded. And finally, the Holy and Demon Training Ground it's pretty much left as is, you know. Uh, might as well do one upgrade on this Hellfire Archer because I have a huge number of pretty sprays and I'm not really using Dark Necklaces right now. And since Zerida can actually use Hellfire Archers, why not, right? I'll probably just bring this to level 7, maybe level 8, I'm not sure. Level 7 is a, is a reasonably cheap point because it uses 2 and then 3 of the materials, right? But level 8 uses 5, then 7, then 9. So level 8, 9, 10 is where it gets really expensive. But bringing characters up to level 7 is acceptable. So yeah, overall, I'd say my training ground is far behind most people. Um, because I simply never, ever farmed the entities. It is what it is. I per That was on purpose. Part of the reason was to have a reasonably low level training ground 
for my videos, right? So that people can't say like, oh, your training ground level is too high, so that's why you were able to clear the fight. No, my training ground levels are quite low. So that was on purpose. And the other reason was basically because I keep looking for core SSR weapons from the dragons. And I still haven't gotten them after all this time. You know, I've been farming dragons since I think March or so. So it's been four months and still missing tons of core pieces of equipment. So it is what it is. All right, so last but not least, let's talk about my bonds. And I already did that pr pretty quickly earlier, right? Just mainly upgrading Landius right now. That's my primary character to upgrade. Uh, everyone else is pretty close to max except for Leon. Leon's just missing three heart bond upgrades. But I may, you know, it's interesting because the all hero stats plus 5% could be useful. But the drawback is I personally think Leon doesn't have extremely high utility in PvP, Summit Arena or anything like that. So we'll see. For now, Leon is the way he is. I'm going, as I said, my primary upgrade uh, characters right now is Landius, then Zerida, then Juggler. So only after those three are done will I upgrade probably Leon to finish him off and then focus on other characters after that. The other character that I, I'm thinking of doing after is Luna because Luna would be a great uh, melee DPS character for Summit Arena with Wind Spiral for movement, right? Gale or move again and then Raging Thunder as long as someone else faction buffs her. So lots of things that I need to upgrade and not enough resources as always this game is horrible in terms of resources. All right, so with all that said, I think what I'm going to do for now is start upgrading my Zerida. Because for this week, I need to get Zerida his, her double class mastery. I do have six runestones. So let's get started on that. And that will this will be the last part of this video. What I need is Hermit Scrolls, Overlord, and Emblem of Purpose. And I've been saving up my guild medals for this upgrade. So, we said Overlord's badge, right? Crap. Purpose. And I already forgot the last one. Oh man, terrible memory. Nope, I need to buy one more Overlord and one Hermit. So, one more Overlord, one more Hermit. Where is it? There we go. And... Derrida will finally get her first class mastery here. So two more hermits and two more overlords. I may not even be able to finish her double class mastery due to lack of materials for this week. So one overlord, two overlords, and then one hermit, two hermits. Yeah, I'm already just like that. I'm already at seven out of ten. So I'm going to have to wait till next week to finish. Derrida for her double class mastery anyways right because I I could start this but I can't finish shadow and that's the problem so uh, that's not good not sure if Derrida can be used for arena this week then due to that lack we'll give it a try though but let's begin using runestones on Zerida anyways. Look at that stat drop. Wow. It's always scary when you go from a fully mastered branch to the basic level on uh, you know, a tier 2 class rather than tier 3 because that stat drop always freaks me out. Well, let's continue to upgrade Zerida a bit more. Some battle practice scrolls. 
So what I found as a side note is that you generally need roughly 12,000 guild medals to fully upgrade a branch. So I only have, what, 4,200 now, so I'm nowhere close to the required amount. But with that said, generally speaking, it's the last two upgrades on any branch, so those last two ones that really eat up all the guild medals. So getting to two out of four class mastery is reasonably cheap. It's getting those last two that it gets very expensive. So I can probably bring my Zerida up to two out of four with my remaining guild medals. We'll see. So I need Fearlessness, Forest Patrol, Fighting for this upgrade. Fearlessness, Forest Patrol, Fighting Scroll. And let's use up another Runestone. Shadow Raid. So, I have all the skills I need to use uh, my Zerida, which is going to be the Shadow version, which means Obliterate, Shadow Raid, and then a one point skill like Backstab. Right? I don't prefer Sly Stride because the faction buff basically provides it. After annihilating an enemy, you get a chance to move two or more blocks. So, there we go. This is my personal preference. Of course, the other Zerida would be the Alhazard Bloodthirster plus Killing Blow plus Sly Stride Zerida. But that's not the one I'm going to be using for now. We'll see in the we'll see if it changes. Because that one extra movement may make a huge difference. We'll see. I'm just not sure at this time. Uh, it's an experiment for now. In any case, discreet okay. Discreetness, fearlessness, and samurai scrolls. Get a few more upgrades into my Zerida before I end the video. Fearlessness, discreetness, samurai is this one, right? Yeah. So, still very, very cheap upgrade materials because they cost 100 or 200 resources right now. So Purpose, Freedom, Samurai, Fighter. Now these ones are going to get a bit more expensive because it's now hit the 400 level cost, right? So let's buy the Samurai first and then the Fighting ones and then it was Purpose and freedom. Freedom and purpose. There we go. So, two out of four mastery, done. And I think I'm stuck here at this point. Ranger, hermit, purpose, freedom. This is where now it gets expensive, right? 600 costs, 400 costs. I can start though. So let's start off with the Hermit purchases. And then, then one more purchase, which is Ranger. And then I just need to do a few more purchases. And I will have a 3 out of 4 Mastery Zerida. So pretty good. Yeah. Overall, I'm quite satisfied with the amount of upgrades I got in right now. because I'm going to get around... I haven't done my Guild Wars yet for this week, right? So that's another 18,000 Guild Medals. So I am basically set for next week in terms of Guild Medals and whatnot. Uh, my plan would be 
for this week would be obviously to finish off Zerida as much as I can, which is just one more level. And then I'll probably start on both Landius, right, his second class mastery, and probably start getting materials to do juggler. Now the problem with juggler is I don't have enough runestones to use juggler, of course, given that he needs four runestones, right? But I can get started on upgrading him anyways. So what I would have is a double class mastery Landius, double class mastery Zerida, and then on juggler I'm going to have four of his six classes that he needs. So that's my future plans for the next few weeks in preparation for Summit Arena. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you found this kind of interesting. And on that note, Nitro out.